L100! Wait, 106% more monster life, 53 fizz. Uh, Awakeness Desolation, less attack speed, less movement speed, 58 Elyras, cannot recharge ES, no regen. Oh, fuck off, dude. person in this in this game that brings gold rim to bt17 viable man <laughs> Dude, these stupid lasers! Fuck off! Dead. I mean, he's dead. But it's so bad with the meteor. Where's the problem? You said this is the hardest, man. That was actually easy. What am I looking? Am I looking at the big dude now or just Oh, I did it. Jesus. Ah, easy. And we got the boots that fucking nobody needs, dude. It is Uber Uber Elder down. Oh, 
Oh, obviously he does it again. No! Wait, what? Not even an, an Eldritch and you any currency? What am I doing with this shit, man? 70 less damage and 80 all rest. Are you fucking me? Oh. What is this mod pool, dude? Wait, they're dead. Bro, this is like the worst fucking possible thing that you can have, dude. Wait, I can see. Time to die. All right, and we. It is insane, man. It is insane, dude. Massive 15%, dude. <laughs> oh, all right, boys. Seven out of seven Uber bosses down. Five out of five T17 maps down. Uber bosses cost about, what is it, 15 to 20 divines? And I got back maybe. On a lucky day, maybe two divines is what I got back. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, the final update on my Burning Arrow of Vigor Life Stacking Elementalist. And yeah, since I was doing this uh, Nameless Seer gamble and my character on the way reached level 100, uh, you know, I was like, man, before I start crafting gear, I'm just gonna try some T17 just to YOLO it and see how bad it's gonna be. And uh, yeah, and then start crafting, improve the character and... Uh, Unfortunately, the character just did everything. Like, I, I did all the five um, T17 maps. I did all the seven uber bosses, still having all the loot over here. Uh, I pff, Man, I spent like 15 or 20 divines in fragments. I'm, I was just buying the missing ones that I um, that I didn't have, basically. And then I, I, I ran all the seven ubers, probably 15 to 20 divines investment, and this is what I got back. So, yeah, probably 13 divines or 15 divines lost at this point. But... The thing though is, the build has just done all of it. Not deathless, but I think uber bosses are more of a skill thing. Uh, some were deathless, but not all of them. And uh, I did not bother changing out my gold rim. I was doing this in a mapping setup. I was using the barracks respite ring uh, just for the uber bosses. Usually would do something like, uh, I don't know, um, any DPS kind of ring, you know, the one that double uh, ignites or something. I don't know. You can you can take a lot of like different stuff, but today uh, I want to talk about the things that I would improve on the build because the the gear itself is literally the same as I used in the previous update video. The same items. I think the only thing that I've changed, I was buying awakened gems and uh, level twenty one twenty gems or twenty twenty three gems, so I upgraded my gems. Um, and other than that, I started crafting this ring. Remember back, it was like a fractured uh, flammability. Here I got one with flammability and increased maximum life. And then I just spammed some essences. I think dexterity because I was missing dexterity. Um, didn't turn out insane. We had some chaos res, recoup, whatever. And uh, basically just a stat stick for uh, life, res, and dexterity. Nothing too crazy. But the flammability over here. Uh, and I replaced my gloves with these ones. These are now a better base, but essentially they are kind of like worse um, than the previous ones. Just as Ignite deals damage faster, uh, and then I chaos spam, uh, like I essence spam them, hit attack speed, um, because I don't really need any suffixes. This is something I want to discuss now with you guys. Um, what would be end game gear? What would I have planned if the character would have not been able to do T17 and Uber bosses? so far but now it's just gonna make it way better there is two pubs one that i want to share which is the current version this is the one currently sitting on 22 um million ignite dps like a 50k ehp this is basically the gear, the gear that i'm currently wearing and one that is this one over here which has 18 million but uber so if i swap back to non-uber bosses 
this has like obviously ignite capped so basically the ceiling of the build is a lot higher than what i achieved but this was already doing all the content so the way i play poe i make a character i test it you know i gear it up i craft some stuff blah 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 and then I, I throw it into endgame, but today it already did all the endgame. So I don't see a point now spending 100 divines in a blizzard crown if the character can already do the content, right? I'd rather just sell everything and move on to the next build. But I have to say, this build is amazing. It is so much fun to play. It is a 9 out of 10, if not a 10 out of 10, uh, in terms of mapping with ignite, ignite, proliferation, explosions, super fast. It's a lot of fun to play. And I would say maybe a 6 or 7 out of 10 uh, when it comes to Ubers. I've done all the Ubers with a gold rim and, and my uh, barracks and, and mapping setup. But I think if you if you would have a dedicated Uber boss farmer that is called a 10 out of 10, a character, a miner or something with 100 million DPS or more, these are better to farm Uber bosses. But the fact is, this build can do it. You know, and that proved it just today on stream. If you want to watch the VOD, uh, feel free to do so. I'm not going to talk too much about the current version because the current version um, you basically can see uh, in the P in the description below. I explained every single item last uh, on la on the last video. If I want to check that one out, so now I want to talk about what would be the improvements that I would make for the build. Okay, so let's quickly um, go over every single item. Right, um, basically helmet. I would go for a blizzard crown. The thing though is. Yes, this build scales with energy shield, that is true. But uh, life is not your best source of damage. You know, it is, life gives you flat damage, right? But you still need uh, dot multiplier and uh, faster ignite and, and, and all these kind of things that increase the total damage, right? So just stacking pure life would not be the right way to doing that. And that's why I would have decided to go um, for something like a blizzard crown. Why blizzard crown? It is. Uh, evasion uh, energy shield based item and uh, it still gives you a lot of flat damage but I would go, uh, went with this with the uh, warlord uh, minus uh, inflict faster elevated and merge that with a nearby minus 12 fire resistance with a redeemer mod slam them together see what you get and then on the prefixes go for life maybe I think plus one projectile gems offers you one pierce so that would help with the clearing on top of that and this helmet gives you a shit ton more damage than actually something like a hubris circlet with a synthesized energy shield and, and really insane ES kind of levels, right? So Blizzard Crown, I would have went for that. Gloves is pretty much the same as I'm wearing over here, um, which is Ignite Faster. You can also go for... Now, you, you should you should take something like this. You need the implicits. You you want to have the exposure and you want to have... Yeah, you want to have the exposure pretty much. Fire dot multi, not even the craziest thing, because when we play with Widow Hail and the Quiver like this with Fire Dot Multi and Damage Multi, right? This is insane amounts of Dot Multi, right? There is builds that don't have a lot of Dot Multi, but this one, for example, let's see, 25 plus 24 is 49 Dot Multi. Uh, and then basically time 3.5 because I'm having a Widow Hail. This Quiver um, gives me 171 Dot Multi. Builds that don't have a lot of dot multi, the dot multi here would be a lot uh, better, but since we get a lot of dot multi from this and from our jewels, um, the um, fire resistance exposure is actually stronger. Why is exposure so important on Elementalist? Because um, the notes over here with the extra exposure and you can take even a fire note for an extra minus five to exposure, right? Exposure lowers the resistance of the enemy, big, big, big damage. But this is the only kind of like item where I would say I, I need this with a Searing Exarch Implicit uh, or either World Implicit, right? Because I need the fire exposure. Helmet, there is no point. What, what, are, you, what are you gonna go for? Like reduced mana cost of skills for what? I'm not even using mana. Um, mana reservation efficiency for what? I'm using blood magic. So the implicits on the helmet don't really matter too much. So that's why I said, you know what, a Blizzard Crown uh, with double influence might be the way, right? And the same on the boots. Because the boots I would have planned, I was about to craft them. Um, something like this, you know, take the uh, Ignite Faster, merge it together with the Redeemers, I think. Um, increased effect of non-damaging ailments, so have better shocks and chills and stuff like that for more damage, right? And then just try to get life, movement speed, regular boots, right? Um, so... Another weird thing here is we are getting a lot of all resistance on this build, okay? I'm running here a quad large um, jewel setup here 
And so we get four times Sadist, four times Prismatic Heart. So this is already 40% all resistance. Then I'm having all resistance over here, another 10. So 50% all resistance over here. The chest gives me already 30% all resistance. So you have so much generic all resistance. And I'm currently wondering what are we using our suffixes for? Yes, I'm using a gold rim and it has 40 all res. But if I unequip that, I'm still res kept or barely, you know, like, uh, like, what is it, like 50 over here, uh, 40 over here. So I'm having a lot of extra resistance and I'm not even using any tattoos yet, right? So fixing your resistance shouldn't be any issue. So that's why I say double influenced suffixes might be the, the way, right? Um, yeah, I need more chaos res, but that's why I'm, I'm starting to um, craft these items with chaos resistance. And you, and you can try getting chaos resistance on your, uh, on your amulet or yeah on your helmet, on your boots, like wherever you uh, feel like, right? Do you need to be Chaos Res capped? I don't think so. I think as long as you're like in the positive side, so above zero basically, you should be fine. We cannot get poisoned thanks to our uh, Watcher's Eye or the Ring uh, Corruption. Uh, and we are we want to get rid of all the damaging over time things anyways, because we're playing this with Dissolution of Flesh. So dots reserve our life. And if we cannot get rid of dots, um, then uh, we're just gonna degen and just die, right? That's why I say, you know what, just get rid of all the dots. You're immune to everything, any ignite or, you know, poison, bleed, anything that's like a damage over time doesn't doesn't bother us because we're ailment immune and we also have uh, this one over here. So if you do not have this Watcher's Eye, which I think you do not, um, there is still the way, um, as I did it before, use a barracks with cannot be poisoned. Use a barracks with cannot be... Um, Bleeding cannot be inflicted to you, right? You can just use one of the of the two modifiers. As I said, the damage uh, over time multiplier, this triple uh, mellow balance is not really necessary at all. As I explained before, we have so much dot multi. This 21 extra dot multi doesn't do too much, right? So if you just get a simple Watcher's Eye when you say bleed immune and then you get the poison immune ring or you get the poison immune watchers and get bleed immune ring, you're fine with both of them, right? Just make sure you get a one corrupted blood jewel and you don't even need a life flask for anything. You know what, like what does it do, right? Um, another thing that might come up definitely is my amulet. I have plus one curse. You probably not have plus one curse, right? And there is... Two easy ways to fix that. First of all, my anointment here, the 18% recoup, is completely useless. I was just... Yeah, I forgot when I was doing the Ubers and stuff that I still had this on. This used to be uh, this Searing Heart. So instead, you just anoint Whispers of Doom and you're good. Another thing that you can do is take a Sublime Vision. So there is one with... Um, while affected by malevolence, if it's your only aura, which is the case over here, right? But there is one, you can apply an additional curse while affected by malevolence, is currently 2.63 divines. This would be a super easy fix and also gives you quite some damage because of the effect uh, of, the, of, the, of the aura, basically, right? So, either Supreme Vision or you anoint the Whispers of Doom. Or, another thing is, you just don't use, um, or basically... No, these are two options, basically. Or if you, if you find another one, uh, feel free to do so. Is the Alchemist's Mark 100% needed? No, it's not. It is adding damage, obviously, because it's like, what, uh, a burning ground effect for 27% of the Ignite. So if I do 10 mil Ignite, this thing will still do 2 or 3 million extra DPS, right? But for bosses that are constantly moving and stuff like that, it's not really up all the time. So that's why I say, like... I just, I just got this amulet and then I was like, hey, this plus one curse, so I could put in an Alchemist's Mark. I wasn't intentionally uh, trying to get Alchemist's Mark on there, right? So if you have it, that's fine. If you don't have it, then you don't have it, right? I'm um, just to save currency on that part. So corruptions over here, corruptions over here. Um, belt corruption. So anything that works, don't forget, you can still use the Tainted Catalyst to fix your Ignite faster. I think this belt is kind of best in slot. I was thinking about a second one here that has movement speed, the Mellow Valence Aura Effect, which is more speed, more damage, but I, did, I wasn't lucky enough to hit the 20% uh, elemental damage before, so I kept on using this with all li uh, with life and all resistance. It's, it's not too crazy if you not have 7% increased max life. We have so much percent life on this build, so 7% you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, but I'm running around 19,000 life right now. I could have 30,000 plus if I would not go for ailment immunity, if I would not go for quality of life, but I don't care about that. I want to have a, a character that just feels good, that plays good, that is fast, that has prolifs, explosions. What the number says here, I don't care. I've done all the uber bosses today and I know but my build has only half the damage that I actually plan to have with like super endgame gear, right? 
Um, as I said, gloves, boots, helmet, trying to get ES bases, quiver, damage, widow hail, corruption would be, flat damage would be nice. Uh, I don't know, anything that you can get doesn't have to be, can have, whatever. Um, what else is there to say about here? Uh, the flasks is just like, you know, increased evasion rating. I mean, what, what do I get for having all my flasks up? 3k armor and 3k evasion rating. It doesn't do shit, man, you know, it's... You can replace those flasks. I, I would like to have silver and quicksilver for speed and the Oriot's end for explody. You know, that's what I want to have. This is just, these two flasks I just had in my flask tab laying around because they are from my gladiator, right? I could use max resistance. I could use whatever, you know, if I would have the currency, I would, I would throw in a progenesis, 100%, uh, because this is actually like really, really good. And you are self-sustaining yourself anyways with the, um, with the keystone over here with the eternal youth where you just uh, have like permanent life recharge because we never get damage because we reserve damage and reserving damage is not really taking damage for genesis the same way you lose life over a certain amount of duration from the damage prevented means you're just losing life it doesn't say you take damage so that's why um it still works with petrified but it still works with the progenesis um to have your permanent recharge job right so good um, let me quickly see um, what else there is. You want to have um, what I did is for quality of life. I was using a lot of these like jewels cannot be hindered, for example, corrupted blood immunity. Then we have here cannot be cursed with silence. If I would play this as a caster, for example, then I have here cannot be maimed. All these like small little details that just make the build feel a lot better if you just have so much quality of life and not being affected by ailments and all these kind of things they just sum up and makes the build overall a lot better than just like hey i'm just gonna buy anything i don't care about anything i don't care about ailment immunity and then all of a sudden you're dying every single map because you're just getting ignited or poisoned or bleeding and you just say like yo shit build right it's definitely an insane build if you pay attention to the detail and put in all these like small little details um for quality of life and stuff and no uh, it is it is really really good the adorned, I already explained, uh, tried, to, like, best way possible, 150%, like, obviously, but cost mirror, why would you do that? Uh, try to get a 143, so you get the maximum life roll, if possible. If you're going with 131, you should be super fine. If you don't go with an adorned, because um, this is uh, what a lot of people ask me, what if they don't have an adorned? Um, I would have to recreate the entire build, because this build is basically... Uh, played around getting as many jewel slots as possible. I mean, the entire tree is jewel slots and life nodes, right? So if I would not have adorned, I would definitely go for something like Breath of Flames or um, take other nodes and just have less jewel slots and then just take good rare jewels with like fired up multi, burning damage, uh, increased life or anything like that. Would it be playable? Yeah, of course. Would it be insane? Can you one-shot Ubers with a uh, with, like, complete budget gear? Probably not, unless you're God Gamer or something like that. I don't really uh, know, and I don't really care if you can do that or not. Good, but this would be the way... Because I, I wasn't starting off with an Adorned in the first place, right? And my tree looked different in the start. Um, good, here is my Storm Shroud and Ailment Avoidance Jewel. I only need one because of the uh, Adorned Jewel, so I have 100%, 111% chance to avoid being shocked. Um, so I got this one. So you have like two different jewels. Let me quickly put them side to side so you see the difference. One is the increased maximum life and burning damage. The other one is the increased maximum life and damage over time multiplier. Um, how to figure that out? You basically just have both of your jewels over here. So one is the sellousness and the other one is the combusting. So if I just say I would um, change the combusting into sellousness, I see, okay, I'm getting minus DPS. So you have like a good mix between half dot multi and half burning damage to min max the damage. Um, cheaper is obviously, um, the burning damage. The burning damage you can get for one, two divines per jewel, maybe three divines. These ones start with like seven, eight divines, you know, so they are more, much more expensive. Um, these ones are super fine, but if you want to go the extra mile, really min-max your damage, you need to, um, throw in a couple of dot multi ones because there's always like, what are the break points and, uh, how much damage is this one giving and that one giving and so on and so forth. Good. Anything else that I want to mention over here when it comes to the end game uh, gear? Uh, not really. I mean, I think we talked about any item, any substitution about that. Um, one thing here, this item doesn't really have any stats, no uh, armor, evasion, energy shield, so you can just craft on. I just bought this this way. It had strength on and I didn't have the juice to uh, get life on. But you would get it to 30% quality and then you basically... Um, 
craft like flat life per quality or, or strength per quality or if you're missing uh, intelligence get intelligence per quality it's not gonna really break your neck but you need a lot of decks and you need a lot of intelligence and another thing that i really want to mention here if you ever find yourself not having rest cap because for whatever reason don't forget this amulet gives you 18 to all maximum res uh, like to all resistance for each empty white socket right that means what I would do is I would go um, and buy the Omen of Blanching, I think it's called. It's the one that gives you one to three white sockets. And then just use the Omen of Blanching on, on one of your items and just get like one or two white sockets, you know. Two white sockets is 36 all resistance. Yes, you're lo losing a little bit of life, but the little bit of life is not going to give you so much EHP or tankiness um, as not being res capped, right? Super easy to fix. Get some white sockets, be res capped, you know? So that's why I say I'm, I'm not sure what I would take for all the other suffixes besides chaos res because we get so much all res and stuff uh, from the gearing itself, from the passive tree, and so on and so forth. But I think this is pretty much all I have to say about the build. Definitely recommendable, super fun to play. One of the best mappers I played so far. Uh, it reached level 100, did all the content, uh, T17, and uh, all the uber bosses. And yeah, I'm super happy with the build. And that is time now for me to move on, sell everything and just move on to the next project and see if the next build will also perform uh, as well as this one. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.